That right there has become my new favorite bait pattern, these big gut minnows. There he, oh, there he was, dang it. See him rising up the water column with it, see if he hits it again. There he got it, got it way up top. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one. Today we are gonna be talking about probably my favorite or what has become my favorite uh, pattern, bait pattern to use for crappie just year round. You just, you can't go wrong with it. Um, and that is a small minnow pattern like this one right here. Specifically the, uh, the uh, gut pattern or the, the big belly pattern on these small plastics with a very, very flexible and uh, enticing tail kind of triggers a lot of strikes. You can vertically jig this, you can cast this out. Actually, we're gonna be doing a little bit of both today. You can actually get this pattern through the two more casts tackle box. It's a monthly subscription. Uh, one of the only ones, I think probably the only one that I've seen where you can actually build your own tackle box. I've done a few different ones, the duck lure, some small crankbaits. Specifically, we're going for crappie today. No multi-species, all crappie. And uh, that is, this is a smoky shad pattern. So click the link top of the video description. You can build out your own tackle box. It's a monthly subscription based tackle box, but you can actually build it out yourself. I'm going to show you how I fish this, both casting and vertically jigging it. We're going to put some crappie in the live well today. Let's go. All right, to start off, we're doing the six and a half foot ACC Crappie Sticks casting rod. 1,000 size piece of phone Viper X reel, six pound monofilament, and a one eighth ounce ACC Crappie Sticks jig. I got a buoy marker out here. There's about six brush piles. We're coming towards the end of July here. And these fish are gonna probably stay here for until the end of August, 15 to 22, maybe 23 feet of water. Um, they're not gonna go any deeper until this water temp starts cooling in September and October. That's when they'll slide out to that 25 plus foot. But right now, casting over the top of these brush files or vertically jigging them. I got a second rod here I'm gonna show you in a second. But this, this little bait, I'm just gonna yo-yo and pop it back over the top of these brush piles. It's gonna look like a little minnow and these crappie are gonna just engulf it. Oh, let me talk about quick how I found this. If you are interested in using sonar, 2D, down imaging, side imaging, I got a few other videos talking specifically about that. But basically I was using side imaging, slowly aisled across this little point here, uh, came across this uh, stack, I mean stack of brush piles right on the edge and that, it's about 18 to 22 feet somewhere in there, the, the shallow ones are about 18 feet. I'm kind of over the deeper ones right now, 21, 22 feet. And there's a fish right there, right off the bat. He's a little guy though, I can feel him. That's not the crappie we want. This is a good little guy. But on side imaging, I, I zoomed in to about 40 feet left and right. And you could just, as soon as I idled over it, you could just see the massive absolutely massive school of crappie stacked up on it. And uh, <laughs> I got a feeling they're gonna bite pretty good today. I, didn't, I wasn't even reeling, they, that guy just hit it on the fall. That's how good they're gonna bite today. Get back down. You gotta remember when you're reeling it up, that, that bait's rising up in the water column. So eventually you pull it out of the strike zone. There's one, he's running with it. I didn't even feel him. Uh, it's another small guy. That guy's only about seven inches. There's a ton of them down there, so it might take a little bit to weed through these fish. But I highly recommend you have one of those in the boat. A little buoy marker. If you're a crappie fisherman, of, I don't care if you're a novice or hardcore, you probably should have at least one of those in the boat. There's one right on the drop. Ooh, this guy's got a little bit of fight possibly be our first one for our live well. Maybe. No. I'm gonna cast to a different school. There's so many fish down there. There's gotta be some bigger ones in it. These are all like cookie cutter seven inch fish. I'm gonna cast over here a bit. Let's screenshot this side imaging for you. You can see there's just brush piles stacked up. Now we're not moving very fast, but you can see there's brush piles stacked up everywhere left and right. And these crappie this time of year are just gonna hold tight to them. If you're on a lake that doesn't have brush piles, look for a deeper weed edge. 
the weeds on our clear lakes up north are gonna come out to about 15 to 20 feet of water, depending on how clear the, the lake is. And these crop, you're gonna find a little ambush point. There's a tap on that weed edge. There he is. That might be a little bit better of a fish. He's staying down. That might be our first keeper right there. Let's throw him on the bump board. He might be nine. Sure is. There we go. Keeper, there's nine right there. He's about nine and a quarter. Keeper number one for the day. I'm just letting this thing drop right on top of him. Just slowly reeling it. Normally, if you, if you need to trigger a strike, you kind of got to give it a quick pop and then that'll trigger a strike as they run up the water column with it. But so far, it's just been letting it drop and then slow reel it. There he is. Just felt a little bit of pressure on that rod tip. It wasn't a tap at all. Sometimes that's what you get with the casting. I might be another keeper. Come here, bud. Flung him in. See what you are real quick. Oh, yep. There's another nine inch fish. There's nine right there. Now we're getting to the decent school of eaters. We're not gonna catch two pounders today. Sorry to disappoint, but these are some quality frying pan fish. And you can't complain about that. There's a ton of them down there. So one of the main reasons I like this, I'm, I'm really liking this kind of this bigger gut on these minnows. Typically they hold up a little bit better when you're hooking them on a jig. Sometimes those thinner profile, like a curly tail or even a creature bait pattern. Oh, there's another one. They, they tear pretty easy, if you, especially if your hook's got a, um, a barb keeper. So these thicker beer gut things, you can, you can use them a little bit longer than those other baits. There's one. And they got that super finesse tail, which definitely triggers a strike. Oh, that was a good fish too. All right, here we go. I turned the game up and I actually raised it up to 20 feet. This is the top of a brush pile. We're actually right over the top of right now. I'm gonna see if I can pull a fish off it. Going with the eight foot. Now I gotta get the jig right underneath the transducer, which is directly below the trolling motor. So you don't really wanna go with 10 or 12 foot if you're trying to do this. There's my jig dropping down. You see that line right there? That's me jigging it. See if we can get a fish to come off that top of that brush pile. Oh, there's, oh, there he is. Dang it. Those are fish right there. Those long lines were right over the top of them. Except now my jig is, oh, there he is right there. Oh man, he let go. There I am falling down. Oh, bam. Do you see those fish come running up at it? Holy smokes. Drop it back down there. He comes again. Oh, wow. They are smacking it. Dropping it back down now. There he is, got him that time. There's a keeper. There's a keeper. Anchor lock on that brush pile. Yeah, that's gonna be a definite nine and a half or right there. There's nine, that's about a half. Going in the live well. I'm only gonna keep about a half dozen. I don't need a ton. But there are so many fish down there right now. Holy smokes. So what I love about these bait patterns, you can cast it out, swim it, or you can vertical jig it if you need to. All right, gonna go over the top of the, here they are. Big school. There I'm dropping down. Oh, I was dropping down in the middle of them. Oh, there he, they got it on the drop. There I am reeling it up right there. Is that guy gonna keep? That's the question. Oh, we barely, yep. He's gonna be our nine, nine and a quarter. Then we're gonna get one more fish in the live well here and call her a night. These fish are so hungry, I'm not even having to do much to them as far as jigging approaches go. There was tap. 
right there at the 10 mark. Dropping that jig back down. There he, oh, there he was, dang it. See him raising up the water column with it, see if he hits it again. There he got it, got it way up top. But he is not gonna cut it, unfortunately. He's been bit, look at that tail. Muskie's been chasing him. Let's see, there's a fish chasing it up right there. Right, I'm dropping back down. Let's see if that fish gets it. Come on, buddy. There he is. Yep, that's gonna be our keeper. It's gonna be uh, our frying pan fish, I think. It's gonna be close, actually. Well, we barely touch his nine, but that one's going in the live well right there. There's nine. Ooh. Yep. Ouch. There you go, buddy. All right. Well, that's some crazy stuff on that 2D sonar, huh? That right there has become my new favorite bait pattern, these big gut minnows. Um, I absolutely love them. They're so versatile, vertical jigging or casting, and that tail is so sensitive. And right now you can pick them up, put them in your tackle box, go to two more casts, the link down below. Again, I think it is the only monthly tackle box subscription that lets you build your own tackle box, which is pretty crazy. So check these out. I will leave a link in the video description. I'll leave a link to the entire setup. This time of year, crappie are in that 15 to 20, 22 foot range. Find those deeper weed edges on those contours. Use your side imaging, use your 2D, down imaging, whatever you need to. And uh, if you got brush piles in the lake, like this this lake fortunately has some, those crappie are gonna stack up now, probably till the end of August into probably mid-September for water temps cool back down and they're gonna slide into a little bit deeper water. But appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram I'm gonna go fry these fish up. We'll see ya.